Eight miles. Uh, I don't know how to, eight, eight, eight. Uh, to make it 600. I think it puts me just over 600. It's either 600 or 601. I don't know because my app, speaking of being forced to pay for subscriptions, uh, my running app at the very end of the year uh, converted so that you can, I used to be able to see my yearly stats and then sometime early in December, they were like, oh, that's a premium feature now. Want to pay for it? No, no, I don't. Anyways, I didn't really want to record while I was running. I just wanted to run, get it out of my system. Go, 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 go. And uh, I was trying out my dad's fancy warm pants that he gave me for Christmas and they, uh, they kept me warm. They're nice, thanks dad. Anyways, uh, I should probably eat something now because that was a pretty solid run. Very familiar uh, hold music at this point. Bonjour, euh, je vous appelle juste pour demander si vous avez bien reçu mon vélo. Je vous ai envoyé euh, la semaine passée. Euh, vous êtes euh, Swanson, Jay. D'accord, j'en dis que vous appelez dès que possible. Ok, merci. Merci à vous. Bon, bon. Well, there's an update for you. Uh, I never, I sent my bike off with that guy last week uh, to Van Moof, and they literally never confirmed that they received it. Which I figured, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it until like Tuesday to call. Which today is the day of doing unpleasant things because that was one thing I just wanted to follow up. He said he had no idea of what was up with my bike and that he would call me back when his colleagues got into work. So I guess we'll find out where, where if, uh, hope, hope, hopefully my bike showed up. I, I don't know. The other thing that I've got to do today, I need to go. I got a bunch of paperwork. I've been in this back and forth with my bank for months. Um, just trying to get my new business account open and available to actually use. I still can't access it which is driving me kind of crazy. And I've asked for like access to it multiple times, obviously over the last few months, uh, it just hasn't gone anywhere. I did finally get some paperwork that looks like I have to sign and turn in. So I'm gonna walk over to the bank and hope that they're uh, open. They might, they might actually be closed until next week for all I know. Walk that over and then that, the last thing, which is kind of more fun, was that champagne, well, this is kind of bad news, but also good news for me. Champagne is cheaper. Usually every year I buy some champagne bottles uh, to put my goals for the year on uh, so I could celebrate them when uh, it's time. And I can link to those videos above and below, whatever, wherever it is you find those links. If you're interested in seeing how I've gone about doing, you know, my New Year's resolutions in the past, because I think it's, it's just a fun way of doing it. And it's very, I guess, uh, on brand for being in Paris as well, but, Champagne is traditionally a celebratory drink. Most people think of drinking champagne at events and celebrations, holidays, things like that. And so champagne sales have actually been really low this year. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stories about it. Lindsay, my friend that you saw yesterday, has some interesting interviews on her podcast, which I can link below as well if you want to go investigate a little bit about champagne is one of her great loves in France uh, and in general, I think. And so um, they're already offering like 30% off. And normally I would wait till the day, like the day or two after uh, New Year's because Sometimes, it depends on the year, but sometimes there's a good discount afterwards. I don't know that the discounts are gonna really get that much better. So I'm kinda of thinking I might go pick up a couple bottles of champagne. I'm not gonna put anything on them yet because I don't know, I wanna reflect on it a little bit. And I think I'm only gonna buy two bottles this year because normally I would buy five or six, try to be fairly ambitious about it. I think that uh, going into 2021, I wanna be ambitious still. I still wanna have big dreams, big hopes, but I also think it's probably a good idea to go in just for the mental health, like with just like, some kind of, you know, attainable goals because just making it right now feels like attaining a goal in and of itself. Don't know if you feel me on that, but it's what it, it's what it feels like. Where's my coffee? I put it on top of the almond roca. None of my European friends seem to like the almond roca that much. I think I'm just gonna keep it for myself. So I, I went for this run this morning, which felt great. Um, I feel good after that. Coffee's helping, it's warming me up. But I've kind of just been standing around feeling stagnant. I gotta get this work done you know, some errands, some phone calls. I have other things I need to do, but I'm having a hard time just finding the motivation and the, the desire to do it. I'm, I'm really glad that I dragged myself out of bed and went for the run. I didn't feel like going for that this morning, but I knew that I would have, you know, I just wanted to get it done. I just wanted to do it. I wanted to make that, speaking of goals, I wanted to make that goal. And, um, and now I'm just kind of mildly at a loss for words and what to do. And I think that it's just the, it's the pandemic fog. It's what we're all, living with to some degree or another. And I don't know what to do to change it, especially because we're gonna find out today or tomorrow whether or not we're going into a more strict lockdown again. Maybe a complete lockdown. It could be a little bit more relaxed like the last one, or maybe it won't be. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to expect. But I think that that, it's not even the not knowing. I think that now that we've been through a couple of them, 
and curfew, which really annoyed me at first and now doesn't bother me as much, especially because it's so dark so early right now. <sighs> I guess maybe I feel kind of resigned to where we're at. And I was talking about it with a friend yesterday and I guess I don't feel like I need to come out of this having achieved much. I feel like, like I said, making my way through it by itself feels like pretty, that's, I'm really glad that I'm, I'm doing okay. In some ways I'm not doing great. Like I think that um, from like the mental health and relational aspects, I just miss my friends and my family. Um, I miss meeting new people. I miss being able to go out and socialize, you know, things that I know are uh, affecting me and are leading me to, I think even be more frustrated um, than I otherwise would be. And so I think in going into 2021, like I said, making it through isn't, uh, just making it through is, is an accomplishment in and of itself. Getting to 2021, 2021 is probably just gonna be a, a muddled mess as well by the sound of things. Who knows if we'll, when things will get back to any semblance of, of normalcy. And so in trying to prepare myself for that, I, I think what, like running has been a good discipline this year. And I think my focus, what I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm struggling to do, and I don't know that I'm going to manage this, but what I want to do is focus on integrating some small disciplines into my life. Running is a good one. A little bit more body weight workout would be really helpful as well. I need to build up some strength, but then spending... 30 minutes a day on small things. So 30 minutes a day on writing. I need to be writing, I haven't been writing. 30 minutes a day on drawing, 30 minutes a day on little things that will add up over time. So that I guess I, I kind of want to prepare myself to come out of this ready to, 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 to get moving. And I guess what I'm fighting against and what I feel is pulling on me is that sense that I'm gonna get, I'm, if, I, if, I, if I let myself give in to that desire to just stay in bed, if I basically lose the momentum and give in and, and build up a sense of inertia, it's only gonna be that much harder to overcome that inertia on the other side. And it's taking extra effort and work and some creativity to fight that now. And I don't know necessarily how to do it the best or how to, um, you know, break the spell. And I don't think I can because a lot of it is circumstantial and it's beyond me. But in taking time to call family, to go for some coffee walks, to enjoy and appreciate life. I watched Soul, uh, Pixar's Soul the other day, and it, it was a really good reminder of just taking that time to enjoy what's in front of you, enjoy every minute of life that you can. And rather than focusing on what I don't have, what I am not accomplishing, where I'm not going, to be able to focus on what I have right in front of me and just to try and enjoy that for what it is in the moment. And that helps a lot. So if I can, that's a discipline as well within meditation and focus on gratitude and being thankful for what I have. If I can spend some time doing those things and ritualize them to some degree, I gotta figure out how to do that. Then I think that I will come out of this better ready to engage with whatever comes next. And I gotta figure that out, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna lose track of that because I, I have seen in myself over this entire year in waves coming and going, a propensity to, to let myself settle back into the quagmire and kind of give up, uh, especially on big dreams and big hopes, or even just little ones, just even getting started for the day, making a video, taking any photos, writing at all, doing anything that I should be doing or would like to be doing normally in other circumstances and just completely losing the energy and the, the drive to do it. Which again, I think is totally understandable and totally normal, but it's also something I feel like I need to I need to say out loud and I need to actively fight. I think that there's some things that are completely out of my control and that I'm just gonna have to learn to accept and move through. And there are other ways in which I can improve the passage. And my attitude and uh, some little disciplines are, are big for that. Which even just talking about this makes me feel like, okay, like I'm ready, I'm excited to do that. I, and that's what I'm also really grateful. Thank you for listening. And thank you for these, we don't have a garage to do garage monologues in, but I wanna engage in chateau monologues at least because I hope it's beneficial for you to hear me thinking out loud, but it's really helpful for me to think out loud like this because it gets some of this darkness out in the light. And it also helps me to remember like, okay, yeah, like I am excited to play with this new tablet and draw things and to draw on pen and paper uh, with pen and paper as well to write again. Um, like, and something like 20 or 30 minutes spent doing that 
it sounds very doable and I know it can turn into longer periods of time, but just holding myself to like, okay, I'm just gonna sit down for the next 20 or 30 minutes, I'm gonna listen to some music and I'm just gonna draw. Um, it sounds like it sounds like it'll do me some good, and I know that if I put that effort in over time, I'll be in a, a better place at the end uh, than if I hadn't. <sighs> oh, that makes some sense. Anyways, uh, this has been a, a random and unplanned little monologue. Also, did you notice that my head is finally healed up? That's good. You can see like. There's like still a little bit of an indentation. It's not, a, you, you can just barely see it. I don't know if you can see it, but head is healed. Van Moof is being hunted down. Did they just try to call me back? Coffee drink. I'm gonna go try and get the bank to tell me what the heck is going on with these documents, give me access to my own bank account. And, uh, and, and then we'll see about those champagne bottles. And, uh, and then I think I'm gonna draw for a little bit because I got to. I got to anyways, I might as well enjoy it. Let's go. It's a cause of because you haven't bought a lot of food. Ah, no, no, not at all, because I go very well in all the restaurants. But here, no, no, we have been selected at Elysee this year. Hein. I was looking for the friggin' uh, discount thing that I saw the other day. Which maybe I just missed it. I don't know. But before I could even find it, that lady was just there and like selling. And she was like, hey, you want to buy some champagne, don't you? And I was like, yeah, that's actually what I'm here for. Never heard of this label before. Got to save the receipt. Lanson. They definitely, they claim to be pretty stinking old. The black label dry. I don't know. She gave me, she gave me 10 euros off. So it ended up being... Yeah, about like 15% off, I guess. So it's not as good of a deal as I was expecting when I went in there, but I got I got two of these fancy. They look really fancy. They look fun. Happy New Year. And she was saying it was a really good year for champagne. So, you know, she sold me on it. She, she was a good saleswoman. I was just there to get some fancy champagne for future goals. Okay, a couple of updates. One, the bank was open. And in a surprise twist, I just had to sign that stuff and leave it. It doesn't, I, I hope it gets me closer to actually having access. Like they rolled, they rolled my personal account into the professional account access on the web portal. And then said, <laughs> you need to verify as I logged into this, cause I worked, I went through everything with him on the phone. And then I went to log in and it was like, you need to verify, you know, your, your cell phone for security purposes. And I said, okay. And it said, we've sent you a code. And I said, great. And I looked at my phone and I waited and I waited and I waited and then I reread it. They sent me a code by mail. Yeah, to, ver to verify my phone number, they sent it in the mail. Cause that makes sense. Cause I totally couldn't be lying about my cell phone number if you send it in the mail. Anyway, I haven't received that code in the mail to verify my text, my phone, and I still can't access my bank in my personal or professional bank uh, through my computer. Thankfully, my app still uh, does the personal banking because otherwise I would be screwed. Uh, but I can't access the professional from anywhere. Not here, not down the street, not in a boat. Not with a goat, not in a moat, no green eggs or ham for me. So that is the banking update. At least we've made some progress. We'll see maybe by 2022, I'll actually be able to access my professional account. My accountant is going to kill me at some point. She's lovely, but I, I'm kind of worried. In other good news, I did, Van Moof called me back uh, before, right before I went out to grab this stuff. And uh, they said that basically there was, it was, I was, cause I was kind of concerned that maybe I had done something wrong and fried it basically because maybe I'm the common denominator, but no, it turns out something physically did break inside where you go to plug it in, uh, and that was the problem. So they fixed it, but they want to keep it uh, to use it as an example because they want to learn, they want to they try and figure out why it's breaking this way. So they're going to ride it until they they break it again and then try to study, like, was it the cobblestones? What, you know, what was it that actually caused this to happen? So they ordered me another bike, which he said would be here by Thursday and uh, they should have it put together. It is, of course, a holiday. So I told them, look, I'll call you. If I don't hear from you, I'll call you next week. So hopefully by early next week, I'll have a bike again, just in time for the coldest, darkest, Maybe lockdown again. So I might get it just in time to not be able to use it again. It's, it's, it, it's a pattern, I guess. 
Anywho, one last thought that I had on uh, everything I was talking about today and a little bit yesterday or the day before. Part of it too, I was thinking about this and I was reading through your comments. Thank you everybody for leaving comments and for all the kind words and just lovely things. I try to respond to all of them. Uh, sometimes I get to that, sometimes I don't. Just kind of, I'm giving myself permission not to look at comments when I'm not feeling up for it, but I was feeling up for it. And usually it's a very uplifting experience, which is the, the blessing of my comments section is just that it happens to be the loveliest place on YouTube. So I'm very grateful for that. But I was thinking about it and somebody made a comment about being single and lonely and I agree with that. Being single and by yourself and coming home to an empty home is definitely frustrating and not being able to spend time with friends and family, anybody spending so much time alone does make this way harder. But I recognize that the difference I think from this and past experiences of loneliness, because I've been in much like darker, lonelier places in my life in the past. And I think what's different about this, this time, beyond being, I think, a little bit healthier than I used to be, um, is also the frustration comes from not being able to do anything about it. Like that sensation that I can't just go out and meet people. Even if I was lonely in the past, there was at least that option, like to go meet friends or a woman in a bar or in a coffee shop or anywhere. And now th that option is not even available to me. And so I think that frustration and not being able, it, it's a frustration that is born of an inability to actually take action to solve my loneliness. And that's that's what makes this different and what makes it really hard. And I think what, what makes me angry where loneliness in the past has made me angry at times, but has I think led me more towards sadness or despair on the far end of that spectrum. And this time it makes me kind of feel um, impotent and frustrated because I can't just go to a bar and hang out with friends. I can't just arrange a game night with friends. I can't just, you know, talk up a stranger on the metro and get a date out of it. There's no talking anybody up right now. We're all masked up. And I think I've tried to talk to one or two women on the metro in, the, in 2020 and it hasn't been bad, but like the vibe isn't there and nobody's, it's like, oh, well, it's nice to talk to you. Like nobody's, it, it's just, it's just a weird year. So I had that thought. That inability to take action against my loneliness is the source or one of the sources of, of that frustration that I think is different this year. But I'm going to think about it, come up with some goals. We're still going to have goals. We're still going to think big for the future, plan, hope, dream. And, uh, you know, 2020 might be lost to us, but 2021, hopefully we'll be able to salvage at least a part of. And then by 2022, we'll be like, what were we complaining about? Life is great. I hope. And in the meantime, I hope you're doing well wherever it is you are. And I'll see you bright and early again tomorrow or one of these mornings sometime soon for, you know, we're locked down in Paris. It's it's the Paris, it's the dream, right? The Paris dream. I should get, I, I got to go outside and experience this a little bit more. I'm going to try and explore, do, I got to do something before we get fully locked down if that's going to happen. So I'll try and I'll see you for that, you know, soon.